Howdy and welcome to another standard gameplay video here from the preview event from the Outlaws of Thunder Junction. And today's deck was voted on by my supporters on Patreon as we explore Naya Legends with Annie Joins Up. This new 4-mana legendary enchantment deals 5 damage to a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls when it enters. So perfect answer to an opposing Shieldred or maybe Bloodletter out of the new Bloodletter combo deck. And then if a triggered ability of a legendary creature we control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. So it's perfect in this deck that's filled to the brim with legendary creatures that have various abilities. We start out at 2 mana, so I'm not playing any 1-drops. Possible we may need to lower the curve a little bit, maybe add Skrelv for additional protection, or maybe just add some life gain in the form of Lunark Veteran, once you bring this to the ranked ladder, where uh, decks can be quite punishing and uh, quite aggressive as well. But for now, in the preview event, I didn't feel like it was super needed. So at 2 mana we've got Kellen, we can potentially use the Adventure on turn 1 at least to make a map token, and then the ability potentially finds additional creatures if it attacks. Then Inti, a great way to kind of get rid of excess legends that we already have in play, give us more plus one counters, and in the late game just provide some good card selection. Then a Bristly Bill is a new addition, a 2-2 with a landfall giving us a plus one plus one counter on any creature we control. And then for five mana we can double the number of plus one counters, so that kind of synergizes with itself, and we even have some other plus one counters throughout. And then the Loyal Bodyguard doesn't have a triggered ability, but an activated one, so this one doesn't benefit from any joins up, but still a very nice creature for two mana that can also protect some of our other creatures from spot removal or destroy effects. And then we've got one Ruby giving us a little bit of extra mana, maybe play our four drops and five drops ahead of schedule, just helps us double spell. And then it also has a triggered ability that can maybe benefit from any joins up. And then Malira is pretty similar to the Bodyguard, doesn't help protect our entire team, but can occasionally maybe stop a poison deck. And it's mainly here so we don't have three Bodyguards and to run into awkwardness with a legendary rule. Now I am playing the full set of Anim Pakal, since this is really the card we want every game, especially in combination with any joins up. This can go off as we not only get to add two counters per turn, but we also trigger the Gnome ability twice, so we get to make a ton of extra 1-1 tokens and potentially close out the game in just one or two attacks. And then we also have Adlin making additional tokens, similar to Anim, just not quite as explosive, but uh, having Vigilance can also have its benefits. And then Samut also plays quite well with all these token makers, since we'll likely end up with a few creatures hitting the opponent and drawing us extra cards. And then at 4 mana, besides any joins up, I also have one Roaming Throne, because any joins up is legendary, so don't always want to draw multiples, but a Roaming Throne provides a very similar effect if we name human, since almost all of our legends are humans. And then we've got Agros Koss, which can maybe prevent opposing creatures from blocking by suspecting them, and then can eventually exile them, especially if we get to trigger it twice when it enters. And then the partners, another great way to add plus one counters to the team, also very synergistic with Anim, if we get to add two plus one counters, will result in even more gnomes. And then topping off our curve, playing two copies of Jeru and Hazaret, which can also potentially come down with haste and vigilance, and then can find additional legendary creatures, so that can provide a nice bit of card advantage, or can be a way to kind of recover from a board wipe. But again, it's possible that we don't need all these curve toppers and would rather have some more cheap creatures to help out against aggro. And then the mana base also gets to play with Cavern of Souls, only three copies because it doesn't help cast any joins up, so I don't want to run into a situation where I draw multiple caverns, but naming human can make our humans uncounterable. And then Plaza does actually help cast legendary enchantments, so that's still great, can provide a bit of utility protecting our legends later. And then I've got one garden, and then kind of a mix of pain lands, fast lands, get to play with a new inspiring vantage as well. And then uh, the other lands coming into play untapped later. And then of course the channel land can also be channeled for often just one mana, providing additional utility. And then I almost forgot Animus Might, which can be cast for one mana if we use a legend, so that gives the deck a little bit of removal as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is uh, not perfect, but I think it's still keepable, assuming we can string together a few land drops. And Inti can help there as well. So land is good. Turn to Inti, turn three, Bill plus a land perhaps. So we can get immediate value. Inti is gonna eat a removal spell. Bitter Triumph still at least costing 3 life. A 
our opponent looking at Field of Ruin and what to target. Although Bill can uh, potentially give us an extra counter if they use Field of Ruin. Do we have a forest to search up, luckily? So now a 4 4. Naming Phyrexian is kind of scary. It's just a shieldred that we can take out pretty cleanly with any joins up. And then next turn we can double spell Ruby and Partners. Opponents on the Bloodletter combo. Luckily drew a removal spell here. So we'll grow Bill. And grow it some more. And take out the Bloodletter. Opponent falls to one. And that does it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Can curve two into three into any joins up. Bill or Inti is the question. I think we play Inti first if they have removal. I think I would rather have them take out Inti. Shoot the Sheriff, taking maybe a spot over and go for the throat. And now Corpses of the Lost, so opponent on a skeleton deck. Well, we could play Anim. It's going to be without any real protection. Or we can go Bill, play a land. Next turn maybe Annie joins up. I think it's going to be better if we play Anim first and then hopefully it survives and we get to double the trigger next turn. Tiny Bones with haste. Can get back Inti as well. That's fine. Okay. So, Cavern naming human. Cavern does not help cast any joins up, at least not to colored mana. And then what to take out here. I imagine it's Tiny Bones, which can then also play defense at some point. Although Angra's Cost can also exile their creatures eventually. This will trigger twice. I guess by taking out ENT we also prevent them from uh, blocking a Gnome token, which could matter. Okay, the Miner also has Haste and a face down card. Probably the 6-2 uh, Skeleton, so that can deal a lot of damage out of nowhere. Okay, so yeah, assuming this is a 6-2 that deals 3 when it dies. What's our solution? I don't really have one other than just winning the game, forcing them to chump. How do we accomplish that? I guess play Bill. Play a land to put two counters on Anim. And then I can either channel Crucible to make more 1-1s or sack Bodyguard to pump our legendaries. Don't think I Ganjo is gonna come into play here. Now the counters do synergize with Anim quite nicely. So yeah, let's think about this, go to attackers, get a 5th counter, making 5 gnomes, and then get a 6 counters, get 6 gnomes. So that's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so this should be lethal. And that's with them chumping Anim. Exaxes here. Wow, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Pretty far from casting Jero and Hazret, the red mana helps. And then turn to either Bill or Melira. Maybe facing a plus one counter deck. Yeah, I guess we'll go for Melira. And then next turn, Adlin. I will miss out on some plus one counters in the meantime, so maybe I actually prefer playing Bill. Since it's not like I expect any removal that destroys out of green-white, it's likely gonna exile. Okay, Steel Seraph. Okay, maybe take that out with Buseju eventually. For now, play my red mana. So next turn we can see if we need to take out the Cage or Steel Seraph. Emperor can answer Bill. And a Vigilant Steel Seraph is gonna try to protect the Wandering Emperor. Okay, so Melira, Channel Buseju for one mana. And then we can play Vantage to set up Jeru and Hazrat next turn. I guess that's that. Archangel Elspeth is next. They can also pump up the token with the Collector's Cage. So that lines up well against the 1-1 tokens from Adlin. So we're not going to have haste yet, since we have too many cards in hand. I guess we'll attack. So this will grow up to 4 power. Good channel I Ganjo to take out the token. They will keep Elspeth alive. Alright, I'll play Jeru then. Ozolith for more plus one counters. Okay, so they can make a pretty large life linker. Bristly Bill could help. Where do we want to counter? Probably on... I want to say a 1-1. One, one. Go to attackers. Melira and two tokens can go at Elspeth. Rest can go face. And then I can just likely getting channeled too. Or we can activate Plaza. And we hit Agra's Kos to prevent them from blocking. Although not before they get to block here. So I can either use Plaza or Sack Malira. I guess uh, I'll sack Malira. Still have three damage going at Elspeth. And that way we get to keep Plaza up in the opponent's turn. And then I guess we'll give Jaren Hazrat Menace.
And that does it. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and uh, do need to hit some land drops. So this hand's not particularly exciting. Can't even uh, adventure Kellen on turn one. I'll take a mulligan. This seems better. So we've got Inti into Anim, and then I'll keep a roaming throne. Facing a Grixis deck. One Jerun has red, can potentially go here just to get a plus one counter. And Anim down, unfortunately. Can still play Roaming Throne. And this time I'm gonna hang on to Jerun Hazret. And hopefully draw an untap land next turn to cast it. Yeah, one roaming throne here, probably better than any joins up would have been, with the opponent not having any targets. So it's good to have a mix of both. Next up Harvester, could maybe set up a reanimation spell next turn. But uh, yeah. Get to slam down our 5-drop. Oh no, they have a make disappear, that's sad. Didn't have Cavern of Souls to make it uncounterable this time. So we'll see what's next. At least they weren't able to use their blood token if they are on a reanimation plan. And we've got some hasty creatures we could top deck. Or uh, ways to enhance our current creatures. Roaming Throne at least doesn't die to go for the Throat. Alright, it's gonna be the Dealer of Death. With the various uh, crimes to provide card advantage. I'll just have to get in for four. Keep land in hand in case we draw another ENT. Discards Jace. And now Duress still enables their uh, legend here. But they might have to chum block. And Bristly Bill, another reason to hang on to a land. This one, sadly, not a human, so it doesn't benefit from Roaming Throne. And then we can attack with both creatures. Assuming they trump. We can maybe get in for two. Alright, they're just gonna cut it down now. Corpse Appraiser can uh, trump block and maybe find an answer. Although now even a land could be a decent draw since we get to activate Bristly Bill to double the plus one counters, make it a 4-4. Four, four. Double Corpse Appraiser it is. Although they cannot really double block if I make this a 4-4. Four, four. Also probably should not have tapped Plaza to keep that available for Bill. Did they find a sweeper? Nope, just another corpse appraiser. Uh, 
And now go for the throat, so they're still in chum block mode. But now Ruby can attack for lethal. Assuming there's no cut down. And even if they did have it, Plaza could protect. Get to trigger it twice thanks to Roaming Throne, and that does it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, we do need to find a third land. I think it's still worth trying. Since we have a decent start with Bodyguard into hopefully Anim. And then Bodyguard can protect Anim as well. And then partners to eventually put even more counters on top. Well, let's see what we're up against. A red-green with a scout. Revealing another scout. So it doesn't give us too much information yet. And bristly bill. That will have to wait. So if we do miss our land drop, we can at least play Bill. But uh, playing on him would be a lot more exciting. It's gonna be Incy. All right, I'll play Incy, which can maybe find a land, and then grow the bodyguard to attack past three toughness. And one partner can go. No land, unfortunately, but we weren't going to find another one for quite some time. Bloated Contaminator, so maybe a plus one counter deck. Okay, Animus Smite, an answer to the Contaminator. So what's my sequencing? If I attack with Bodyguard, our opponent probably takes it. They could maybe double block. I think it's worth attacking first. And then ditch. Probably Adlin at this point. Still no land. Alright, we do see a double block. And then we'll just play Melira. Opponent plots a Railway Brawler, so that can uh, do quite a lot of damage next turn. And found Ruby, that can at least make a mana for next turn. I want to keep Animus Smite to answer Brawler, so I think we just start by attacking with both creatures. And then let's say I do draw land. I guess we could go a Ruby into Bill, miss out on the plus one counter trigger. So how good is Bill? Yeah, I guess Bill can go. And an uncastable Adeline is next. So, haven't been particularly fortunate here. Probably worth saving Inti, since that can add more counters to Anim. Even though we will lose the initial plus one counter. Put on just with a brawler. Now I can play Anim, but uh, it's not going to be pretty if I want to attack with it. And we don't have a creature large enough to take out the brawler or attempt to. Yeah, I'll still just play Anim. Put on playing blue as well. Okay, finally found a land. So Partners is now an option. Or we can play Adlin plus Animist's Might to try and clear a path. And I'll hang on to the Partners.
possible we see a sweeper here. Just the Tower of the Peaks. And we can uh, join up, which is probably good enough here. Attack all out, get all the triggers. In this case, it was probably worth it to discard the partners to Inti's ability, but I would have had to make sure to stack those triggers so that Inti resolves before Anim does, so we get the extra plus one counter and then the extra tokens, but wasn't really necessary. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and uh, missing a red mana for Inti, so probably can't keep. This is better. So we can use Kellen turn one, turn two, maybe just play Kellen, turn three Adlin, or we can go bodyguard into Adlin. Probably don't need Ruby. And that's why our deck has quite a few untapped green sources, so we can adventure Kellen if needed. Ooh, our name is exciting. Against blue-red. Yeah, I'll play the bodyguard to protect Anim from a burn spell. And yeah, bodyguard can hold off the codebreaker as well. And it doesn't block the token from Anim. So things are lining up quite well for us. Now we could die to a slick shot, getting pumped. That can deal a lot of damage out of nowhere, but at least we have an Animist Might we can potentially cast. Another Codebreaker. And Kumano to enable Prowess. So we can block a Codebreaker, sack Bodyguard to protect. That's probably worth it. Since Anim is likely going to be out of burn range next turn. And then now we can double spell and leave the opponent without any creatures to pressure us with. can also explore to maybe get an extra counter on Anim, which will give us more tokens in return. But with our opponent at 7, it's gonna be tough and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Bodyguard into Anim. Got some removal as well. And we'll start with Garden. And there's Scout. So this might be a rematch. Throwing Bird to Pearl Freight. Forgot that one wasn't standard. Yeah, it's nice to see some original decks as opposed to the same two or three that you see on the ladder. So next turn, probably go for Anim since it has the highest upside. Sadly, Strangle will take out our bodyguard. So Anim is now not going to trigger right away. So I could see playing Adlin first now. Could also play Kellen, take out the Thrumming Bird, so they don't get to proliferate. And then we still have a creature to set up Anim next turn, even if it's not quite as exciting as Adlin. Yeah, close call. I may need Animus Might later to take out something scarier, although this growing up to a 3-3 would allow it to hold off Kellen. I do miss out on the adventure too, so it's uh, not an easy decision. Recruiter is next. Don't really want to trade when we need to enable Anim or Adlan, so I'll take it. And Annie joins up was a good draw as well. I think I still favor Anim. And maybe next turn we can join up. 
Kellen finds a forest, which we don't need, so I'll put it in the graveyard. So we'll see if they have another strangle for Anim. If they do, maybe I'll play Adlan first, just to contaminate her. Okay, so Annie joins up. Seems perfect here. Take out Contaminator. Allow Anim to trigger twice and we'll just go all out. And don't need Copperline Gorge. Find another Kellen, which we can still adventure. So yeah, that is the combo. It's a pretty simple one. Two cards that are okay by themselves, but are awesome when combined. So this can name human. Play Jeroen Hazaretz. And we can potentially explore here as well. I guess that was probably a mistake, because we no longer have haste on Jeroen Hazaret. So, probably should have just attacked. Alright, so we got to see our Naya Legends in action. And yeah, Annie joins up, certainly impressed. Now I could see this deck being a little too slow for the ranked ladder, where you're going to encounter more aggressive, low-to-the-ground decks. And then if you don't have any one-drops to play early, you might be kind of on the back foot, especially when on the draw. So it's possible we need to add cards like Lunark Veteran to maybe build in some additional life gain to help out against Boros and Monorad. And then maybe shave some of those top-end cards, even if they do have good synergy with Annie joining up. So either way, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!